hello and good evening to my many friends, also to my many enemies, and to faithful YouTube subscribers and Facebook friends. Once again, this is another episode of Roosevelt Sounds Off. This is Roosevelt Sounds Off Part 49. And tonight I want to get into a topic or something that is trending. Um, I know a lot of people have not heard about this particular police shooting in Baltimore, Maryland. But, you know, a whole lot of people have because, I mean, the buzz has just been all over social media, all over YouTube, all over Facebook, people giving their opinions and everything. But it hasn't been too much in the mainstream media because the Olympics started today. And um, also um, because of the circus of the 2016 election. Later on, I'm going to get into that in another video where um, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, I'm going to ask, do blacks really have a choice? And I'm going to show you, you know, according to certain intellectual facts, that in this election, black people do not have too much of a choice in between Hillary Clinton or in between Donald Trump, because I'm going to show you and prove that they are both one and the same. And um, until the system is worked on or fixed, no matter who you put in the office, it's not going to make too much of a difference. You know, you all can run for Hillary all day and night if you want to, but until the system is fixed, whoever you put in office is not going to make a difference, and blacks in this election really don't have a choice, as far as I'm concerned. But um, let me get back to the matter at hand. Um, in case you don't know, um, there was a young lady who's 23-year-old single mother named Corinne Gaines. She um, lived in um, Baltimore County, Maryland, and I guess she had a traffic stop in March. Because, as a matter of fact, she videotaped it. You know, I guess she took off her license plate, put a piece of cardboard there, and said that she was a sovereign citizen. And she videotaped the police, I guess, coming up and you know speaking to her. And I guess they got her out the car and everything, and they put some traffic violations on her and charged her with disorderly conduct. And if you see the video, she's just, you know, upset and cursing at the police and telling them that she does not um, live by, if I'm wording it correctly, live by their laws or a part of their laws. But on this one... I'm afraid I'm going to have to take the side of the law or, or on this one because basically in this country of America, as soon as you get into that car, yes, you are living by American law. But I guess she um, is talking about, you know, being a sovereign citizen. People who say that they're sovereign citizens, they don't believe in any birth certificates, they don't believe in any, um, you know, social security cards in any kind of a form of identification or um, state ID, no driver's license, no nothing. Because they said that they're a sovereign citizen and they should be able to live free. And sometimes to a point, I mean, I do agree with that because as many of you all heard me always say in some of my previous videos that I always say that me, myself, I don't know about y'all out there, but I'm a free man. I can go wherever I want to and do whatever I want to. As long as I'm not hurting anybody, you know, I'm free. And I think that all of us should be free. But in the grand scheme of things, in reality, we are really not too free because, you know, we have all of these laws and everything that we do have to follow and abide by as long as we live in this country. And um, later on, I'm going to come to you with another video, another teaching and I believe I'm going to call this new teaching that I'm going to get into later on the illusion of freedom. And I'm going to show you and prove to you um, that just because, you know, you're not locked up and everything and you're living every single day in this country, even though people always want to tell this lie and say that you're free, in reality, you're really not free. But let me get back to this story. And um, so what happened was on Monday, um, they sent a warrant squad to her home. I guess they had warrants for the arrest of her and her live-in boyfriend at the time. Uh, and he had a battery charge on him. And guess what? The battery charge was on, you know, for the charge was that she charged them with that because the battery was battery on her. 
and you know and she had that traffic violation and everything and I think that both of these were smaller things I thought that really the only sent a warrant squad to your home if you know by some stretch of the imagination like they found out you murdered somebody I don't really believe in sending a warrant squad or something like that to someone's house um, for something so minor but yet I digress um, so I guess they knocked on the door. They didn't hear it. Um, nobody answered, but yet they heard voices and, you know, the little kids and stuff crying and talking on the inside. So one of the police officers ran downstairs to grab a master key and let themselves in. And they said that she had a long gun, which is like a shotgun, a hunting rifle or whatever, pointed at them and had her son, I guess, like wrapped around her in I guess the form of what you know would also be known as a human shield um, and it, she basically told them that she would kill them if they didn't leave and it led to a seven hour standoff and eventually you know I guess she got on you know Facebook and on Instagram and was you know talking about like the whole thing um, but is something that's kind of suspicious to me. I don't know about to you out there, but it's suspicious to me that I guess during the time that they were trying to negotiate with her, because um, you know the the guy grabbed his one year old daughter and he slipped out the back door, but they did find him and arrest him later. But they, he, she, they were trying to negotiate with her. She was on Facebook, you know, saying different things, and people were trying to rile her up and tell her that yeah, go ahead, kill the police, shoot the police. So one of the police officers, I guess, called the executives of Facebook and they temporarily shut down her Facebook and Instagram accounts. Um, I don't know how come they did that um, because that just looks kind of suspicious to me. Um, like, because sometimes, you know, when police really, really want to do something or do something to somebody, you know, if they know that you're taping or, you know, there's some kind of video involved. You know, they like to do a whole lot of things without a lot of, a lot of eyes on them. You know what I'm saying? That's how they get away with a whole lot of things. And um, I guess they shut down the Facebook page and everything. And I guess near the end of the whole thing from the story that was told is they fired a warning shot first. And then she actually fired at one of the officers. Then the officer fired back, fatally injuring her. And now, a whole lot of people are saying, even some of my fellow YouTubers, um, like um, Tommy Sotomayor and Brian Solange, these are two guys I listen to faithfully. And even though um, a whole lot of things um, Tommy Sotomayor says, um, he is basically a black guy, in case you all don't know, who doesn't really like black people and doesn't particularly like black women. And a whole lot of things that he says about black women, you know, sometimes is true. About how sometimes they are more quicker tempered and they get the, you know, ghetto fight personality. And I've talked about this before myself. You know, walk around with the color of rainbow in their hair with different types of weave and all of this stuff in their hair. And Brian Solange says the same, some of the same things. But at the same time, these guys both said that they didn't feel sorry for her dying. And they said because of her attitude and the way she was, she basically deserved what she got. Now, I don't know about you. I mean, I can look at it from both sides. I mean, I think that, you know, maybe she was tired of certain things that were going on in this country with police. You never know what kind of history she herself could have had with police officers and look at all of what's going on in this country right now I mean the killing in Baton Rouge and you know the um, Philando Castillo in Minnesota and you know it's just all over and everything you know right now and some people are just saying that she deserved to die but I don't no matter what I don't care what somebody was doing I don't know if I glory in the death of anyone, especially over something that could be considered to be so small and minute. 
I keep saying, in this country, we major in the minors. We really do. Only thing this was was just, I mean, a, a warrant for like a traffic stop and disorderly conduct. And But her five-year-old son, when they fired on her, he got hit also. I don't know if it was wise to fire into a place where her five-year-old son is, but yet I got to look at it from the other side to where if you knew, if you were a mother, you know that you're about to go out in a blaze of glory against the police. Why would you have your five-year-old son around you when you're doing this kind of stuff anyway? If it was me, I would have sent the five-year-old son out the back door or something with the boyfriend or something like that. Or at least I would have told him to stay in the closet and stuff just in case of anything. I wouldn't have had him out there like that and endangering the life of my children like that. So some people saying because of this that she's a bad mother and she's a low-down scandalous. This is what other people are saying, not me. Low-down, filthy, loud-mouth, scandalous black bitch that got exactly what she deserved. I don't know if I agree with that assessment. I don't feel a glory. I, I speak whenever I, I talk. I speak life. Even whenever I pray, I speak life. That even in my old trips that I was a part of for three years after I came out the nursing home from learning how to walk again, the pastor, Pastor Dan W. Willis, taught us that whenever we pray to always speak life. So there, in God is life. You, you know, the devil only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But, I, I mean, so I, I don't know if I glory in the death of that person. I, I believe in life. No matter what a person did, especially for something so minor. So maybe, but yet I can understand, maybe, you know, police officers had to defend themselves as well. So maybe in this whole issue, maybe that there are no easy answers um, to this whole thing. I think it's just a tragic case all the way around. And I just wished it would have turned out differently. I just wished that she wouldn't have involved her son in this thing. And I just that she wish I wished that she would have just came out peacefully. That way she wouldn't be, you know, dead or passed on and everything right now. So, so I mean, golly, I mean, it's not an easy answer. So I literally don't have any more words to say um, about this whole thing. But I just wanted to give my take on it that I think it's a tragic, tragic thing. And I don't believe that she did, did deserve to die for that. So I'm going to leave it right there. And um, if anybody liked the video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And um, like and subscribe. And um, I'll see you all on the next video. Peace and blessings to all.